to the couch, which is now the kitchen table because the couch is too comfortable and this pen that I'm about to use does not work well when you're in a comfy environment. So we're gonna tackle these together. Number four A, a load of bricks rests on a tightly coiled spring and is then launched into the air. Assume a system that includes the spring, the bricks, and the earth. Do this problem without friction. So if we look at A, and we look on the picture on the left, it's got a height of zero and a velocity of zero. And it's loaded on a tightly coiled spring. So if it's got a height of zero, we can eliminate EG, okay? It's got a velocity of zero, we can eliminate EK, which means that all the energy is coming from this spring. Now, I'm gonna choose an arbitrary number. I'm gonna choose five. So we've got five units of energy. We haven't talked about like what that unit is yet. And it's not quantifiable yet. Um, this is all gonna be like qualitative moving forward um, until we start to talk about equations. So we've got five. So since energy is conserved, whatever's on the left for part A is also gonna be on the right for part B. So for part B, if you look over on the left in the picture, it's the brick, like the Super Mario brick that's flying through the air. And it says that it's got a height that is greater than zero and a velocity that's greater than zero. So if it's got a height that's greater than zero, we know there's gonna to have to be some EG. And if it's got a velocity that's greater than zero, we know there's gotta be some EK. There's no spring that's acting on it for part B, so we can eliminate ES. And since the problem says without friction, there's no ETH. So let's in this um, scenario, imagine that it gets pretty high, but it has like it's, it hasn't fully reached that like top uh, point where it stops and then starts speeding up back towards the ground. So let's put it at a height of three, okay? And a velocity or EK of two. So the gravitational energy is gonna have three, the EK is gonna have two, which I arbitrarily chose. If it was at the beginning of its trajectory, so like if it just got launched, maybe the EK is gonna be higher than the EG, okay? Maybe if like if in another scenario, the brick were to get to the top before it changes direction, there would be no EK because it stops at the top of its motion and everything would be an EG. But for this scenario, we're imagining that there's two EK and two EG. So our energy equation is gonna be what's on the left, which is E spring equals what's on the right, which is EK plus EG, okay? So ES, which is five on the left, equals EK, which is two, plus EG, which is three. So five units equals five units. The second part is repeating problem 4A with friction. So the only thing that's different about this is that the second part, so part B, is gonna include friction. Now, if there's friction acting on this object, okay, that is gonna affect only one energy account and that's gonna be EK because it's gonna to act to slow it down. If you look at the question, or if you look at the picture on the left, okay, B looks to be at about the exact same height as it was for part A. So we're gonna put for ES, we'll have our five, but for the left part, okay, we're gonna put the EG the same that it was in part A since it's at the same height. But since there's friction acting on it, EK is gonna be smaller. So when it was at two, now we'll put it at one. And the rest of that equation is gonna go into ETH, okay? So you notice we've got ES on the left equals what's on the right. So we've got EK plus EG plus ETH, ETH, okay? So our system for this is exactly the same. So it's a spring, the bricks, and the earth.
Moving on. Repeating 4A for a system that does not include the spring. So our system is now just the bricks and the earth. So we've got bricks and we've got earth. Now, since it's the exact same thing for 4A, okay, we don't have EK. We don't have EG since it's got a height of zero and a velocity of zero. But now, since the spring is out of our system, we can't include it in this, okay? For 4A, our question uh, said that it didn't include friction, okay? So we're going to look at our account on the right, which is going to have two units for EK and three units for EG. One, two. One, two, three. Okay? But this could be frustrating you now because you're like, wait a second, Mr. Curly, zero does not equal five. Well, the spring that's out of our system is acting on our system in the form of what we call work, okay? So this is work going in. So it's coming from outside of our system and going into our system. And since it's five units, the way we express that is by making five boxes here. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five units of work going into our system, okay? The way that is presented in our equation, it's gonna be the same, so you can write out work, or you can do a capital W, equals EK plus EG, okay? So the only difference there is in parts A and B, everything is within our system, the spring, the bricks, and the earth, and then for part C, we've got something, an outside um, thing acting on our system in the form of the spring. So that goes into our system as work. If energy were to be leaving our system, it would be just the opposite. So then remember, this is not part of the, the question, but it would be leaving our system. So it would look something like that. If you guys have any questions, please email us um, or we can have video conferences with you guys. We hope you guys are doing well and we will talk soon. Later, dudes and do that's